Good Sunday morning guys, Elliot Hulse here back at the gym. Some of you guys noticed last week that I uploaded a video and took it down promptly. I made that video at my office and quite frankly, I just wasn't feeling the vibe, man. I mean, the, uh, the environment just didn't evoke inspiration in me, right? So if I'm going to make these videos, they had ought to come from my deepest heartfelt sentiment of truth and you know when the environment isn't conducive to my really expressing myself like I have in the gym my whole life I think this is just my temple maybe that's why we're doing this on Sunday mornings because the gym is church to me so I can do my preaching that much better here so I've decided to you know I I don't want any videos to be uploaded or remain uploaded that I don't feel really portray or uh, give the gift that I hope to give through these videos. So I'd rather not have it out there. And that's why this week we're starting over again and I'm here and I've got a great question from one of our friends um, that I'm gonna go ahead and read. It's a little lengthy, but I think you will appreciate getting all the details our friend has to share because I have a good feeling that many of you will resonate with where he is coming from. So he goes on and uh, he says, Yo, Elliot. Or he actually says, Hello, Elliot. Thank you, hello. I'm writing to you in hopes of benefiting from you because you embody much of what I'd like to be. You're a man and I am not. I'm 24 and I've been putting off my life, my real life, for a counterfeit dream. Since I've stopped, I've since stopped, but I have been using drugs and alcohol to numb myself to the fact that I was deeply unhappy. I find myself at the end of this road and I've slowly been climbing out of the hole that I've been in my entire life. I've been eating better and I no longer do drugs of any sort and I've started going to the gym. Great. That being said, I'm the opposite of virtue. Years of neglecting my life have made me weak and cowardly. I thought I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I thought that I would be just this whimsical sort of folk singer character. I thought that getting a job was bullshit, but I didn't build any sort of foundation. Though I truly do think that I have the potential to play, to move hearts, I haven't refined myself at all. I was lying to myself with substances and I have this pain in my heart that won't go away. I can't seem to get interested in anything beyond a surface level. People either outright dislike me or really don't care for me and I can't blame them. I've made my bed. I want to make my own authentic signature in this world. That was the dream but now I'm scared that I'm just going to end up nothing that I'll end up terribly unhappy in some job, which I think I would rather commit suicide than do. Please help. D. So, uh, David. Uh, there are thousands of Davids, so I can say that, and nobody will know you're still anonymous. I've gotta go right back to the fundamentals. I would like to begin here today by inviting you to take a good look at the type of language you're using against yourself. When I hear you say things like, Elliot, you're a man and I am not, the very first thing I thought, because I took it very literally, was that, oh, this is a woman. But as I went on, I came to realize that it was an evaluation about your worthiness as a man. And to use that type of language with yourself is violence against self. Right? And you really do go on. I want you to read what you sent me. You really go, go on and you, you begin to, or you continue to stab yourself in the leg. You begin shooting yourself in the foot. You begin cutting off your nose to spite your face this whole time. What I'm saying is that your, your language verbally to yourself is very, uh, I perceive as very violent. Let me see where else you go. Um, years of neglecting myself have made me weak and cowardly, right? You also go on to say that you thought you knew what you wanted in your life and, uh, and then you evaluated what 
I believe, just based on what you wrote here, was your heart's calling, which is to be a folk singer. Uh, and then you evaluated it poorly. It's almost like, uh, you know, a seed was planted in your heart or your heart opens up, right? This is when our heart speaks to us, our heart is tender. All of our hearts are tender. And when our heart opens up and says, this is something that I'm yearning for. And we, especially if we, if we, we tend to it, and then later on, when it doesn't work out the way we thought it would work out, namely because we aren't in alignment, right? We'll talk about that in a moment. We then place judgment on it, right? I just want to be some whimsical folk singer, right? This is what my heart, this is what your heart clearly told you because you went on to begin explaining how I still have some hope for that, but you call it whimsical, right? And you and you and you downplay it. Dude, when your heart is speaking to you, that is your intuition. The thing about intuition is when you ignore it, it begins to dim. Right? Because it's like your, your heart is like a woman, man. Right? Women are of the heart. Men are of the head. Your heart is very feminine. Your heart can be hurt very easily. Your heart needs room and space to open. And it just like with a woman, right? You, you treat her bad, she's not going to be open to you, right? You, you treat her poorly, she's not going to get wet and, 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 and want to be open and, and have an exchange of sexual energy with you. The same thing is with your heart. Your heart's gonna close down, man, every time we judge what's coming up in it, right? So let me back up for a moment and begin with the language you're using as far as, uh, you know, personal violence is concerned. And then I'd like to talk to you a little bit about and, and share perhaps some perspectives on what it means when your heart is calling you to be a folk singer, right? That's not wrong. It's never wrong. Nothing that your heart ever speaks to you is wrong. Your heart is always correct because it's true, right? Anything that's coming from you is true. Everything that we, uh, all the words that we use to evaluate it now are secondary, right? There's a primary movement in your body. Your emotions are always primary. Anything that happens spontaneous is true. Is it resourceful and can I, uh, you know, just go about it, go about uh, trying to experience it in a spontaneous way is a different story, right? I want to be a folk singer. Well, it doesn't mean that you drop everything and go do it. It might be, but the fact is that it is a yearning and it is right and it's true and it should be looked at. With our heart, with regard to our hearts, right? Because this is where I'm going right now with this. With regard to our hearts, everything that comes out of our emotional body is there to be observed. The minute we place judgment on our anger, we place judgment on our sadness, we place judgment on our heart's yearnings, we begin to distance ourselves from ourselves. The minute we look into them, right, even if they're not resourceful, right, let's say that your emotion at the moment of anger is completely unfounded, it's completely unresourceful for the moment, it still needs to have the light of day shed upon it so that you can process it, so that you can look at it, so that you can be with it, so that you can resolve it. Nothing, especially a yearning, is anything to be judged. And it is everything to be embraced and acknowledged, right? And, 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 and please take notice that there's a very big difference between acknowledging the spontaneity of your heart, acknowledging the spontaneity of your intuition, right? Because that's, what, that's the seat of your intuition. Your heart is the seat of your intuition, your head is the seat of your intellect, and your balls are the seat of your instinct, baby. Of the three, the one that's the most ungrounded is the one that's furthest from the ground. Anything that we begin doing do to judge our core, our center, our heart, corazón, core, right, our heart, anything that our ungrounded perspective places upon the heart or upon our balls, upon our instinct, is secondary, right? The brain comes next. It's just the way we've evolved even, right? Even if you look at biology and the way the brain evolved, we've got the brain stem, the reptilian brain, the mammalian brain, and the neo-mammalian brain, right? We are moved from our roots, and it is our flower that allows what's happening in the roots to blossom, 
right? Especially if we train the flower right. So let's begin uh, moving in that direction, right? We're talking about the root system and your heart, your instinct, your intuition, but your head. The head can be a beautiful servant or it could be a horrific master. If you allow your head to, uh, it, how can I put this? If you allow your judgments, if you allow your conditioning, if we allow our stories, we allow how the world has trained us to think about ourselves and others to suppress and dominate our heart and our instinct, then we are not fully grounded. We're not fully human. We're not grounded in our truth, in our reality. And every time I hear someone say, I am not a man, or I am a, you know, all the, all the negative derogatory things that I've said, that I've heard you say, none of which, and here's how we can use the intellect in order to uh, affirm what I'm saying right now. None of it is founded in truth. Not a single thing you said. I'm, I'll begin right from the beginning, bro, and I, I share all this with love. I share all this with compassion. I get excited, so bear with me, you know. You're a man, I am not. That is a judgment, bro. That, that is an evaluation. That is not true. Do you have a set of balls? Do you have a dick? You are biologically a man, right? I don't care what anybody says. You can put on makeup and a dress. You're a man. So what you're saying is not true. It's an evaluation. Right? You go on also to call your heart's so uh, calling of being a folk singer character whimsical. Is your instinct, is your intuition whimsical? Whimsical means completely ungrounded. It sounds like the wind because it means you're getting blown in the wind. Do you make schizoid decisions? Maybe, maybe because the head is get, being flown, blown in the wind. But for you to acknowledge what's coming up from below is very grounded. I think your judgment, this is me, I think your judgment that it's whimsical is whimsical. People either outright don't like me or don't care for me, and I can't blame them. So, we've got to make a distinction between our judgments, right? Because you say people don't care for me, right? they don't like me, and our observations. Right? And I'm, I know I'm kind of going off in many different directions here, but I, I, I think this is important. I want to clarify this. You say that people don't like you. Well, in what way? What, what happened to you that tells you that someone doesn't like you, right? Well, uh, sh I, I asked her to bring me jello pudding and she brought me jello, um, jiggly jello instead. She must not like me. Well, I mean, I, gotta, I, I need the observation. You, you give me no observation. If that's the observation, that means she don't like you. She should she pick up the wrong fucking thing, right? Because it could really be that simple. Oftentimes when people share stories like this with, or share judgments like this with me, people don't like me, and I say, oh, well, please tell me, what did you observe that gave you this, that allows you to make this, observe, this uh, judgment? And then when they, what they come up with doesn't, it's, indicate that someone doesn't like you it just means they did something you didn't like right that's another thing too you know when another person shows up in a way that you don't like it's more about you not liking you than them not liking you right maybe her face or his face is just some people some people got oh my wife called it the other day uh, she mentioned someone having a resting bitch face. <laughs> I had to crack up. I don't know where she got that from. Colleen cracks me up sometimes because she's, she's kind of like, she's straight. She's, she, I'm Wiggles and she's Prickles. And uh, every once in a while she'll come out with something swaggy and she said that and I, I, I really died. I was like, resting bitch face. I was like, what the hell does that mean? Well, it literally means that like, I'm judging this person as a bitch based on the way she looks. Right? So this person, she's a bitch and she don't like anybody, but that's just her resting face. 
You can judge someone not liking you just based on who they are, right? I've got a mean face sometimes. I get it from my dad. Like, we just walk around sometimes like a mean face. And really, a lot of times it's because we're thinking, right? A lot of times my dad just has a mean face because he's working, right? Like, when I'm work, I, I think that's where I get it from with regard to the amount of uh, intensity and aggression I put into my workouts. Like, I just, that's just the way I look when I'm doing shit. Well, if you show up one day and I'm doing that and I got this face on, you might think, well, Elliot doesn't like me. There must be something wrong with me. Dude, once again, an evaluation, a judgment. We gotta get very clear with this. And finally, dude, I invite you, and I invite everybody here, because I've made lots of videos about this, to be very mindful about the words and the language you're using with yourself. The word becomes the flesh. In the beginning, there was the word. This is all truth, biblical truth, right? The word becomes flesh. What you speak, and Buddha says it too, right? You know, it's something to the effect of your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions, your deeds. Your deeds become your habits. And at this point, it's probably a habit. You're 24 years old, you probably habitually talk poorly to yourself. Now, I don't know where it came from. It could come from, you know, parents talking poorly to you. Uh, I think society sets us up not to win, sets us up not to like ourselves, sets us up to have a tremendous amount of guilt and shame, right? So, you know, being a product of civilization, right? That might, might show up, right? Con we're constantly having, uh, being shown why we're not good enough. Wherever it came from, what I'd like you to do now is to begin to notice it. When you hear the voice within, right? And this is, look, some people call it Satan, the devil, right? What's the devil? The devil is anti-truth. The, the devil is ego. Truthfully, you know, we use metaphor to help us understand certain things, especially as we, um, you know, pre-modern peoples, right? We, the, dev the devil's a metaphor, right? There is no dude with the horns, right? You know why I know? Because we ain't seen him, right? Observation versus superstition. But it is very easy to see the devil within. It's very easy to see the demons within. And it's very easy to, in, a, in an objective way, recognize that's not my voice. That's not the voice of truth. Right? That's the voice of ego. That's the voice of conditioning. That's the voice of untruth. The truth is you're perfect just right where you are. We all are perfect right where we are. Whatever your circumstances are right now, it is 100% perfect because it's exactly where you are. There's nothing more than what is. Right? Your judgment on what is is something that the intellect had been fed. Right? Look, dude, when you're ruled by this, you can be, you're literally ruled by this. This is the easiest way for the world to control you. That's why they put us in schools, right? In order to manipulate our brain, brainwash us. Because you can rule a person's body through their brain. And I always say that the body is the brain, right? So you can understand how there's this one thing going on. But you've got to take control. You've got to, I don't even say take control. First, observe the garden, right? I'm going to use a metaphor for you right now. Right? So you see how beautiful metaphors are. First, observe your plot of land. Observe the garden. Right? Just look at it. Right now, you might look at the garden, you'll recognize that there are weeds in there. Right? What do weeds do? Weeds strangle the beautiful budding roses and uh, the beautiful flowers, lilies and whatnot. Right? So just, just notice when those weeds come up. John Osharoff calls them automatic negative thoughts. Recognize, immediately recognize when that automatic negative thought comes up. It's a weed. And pull it out. Right? One thing that you could do to pull out that weed is to replace it with a positive present, ten, present tense affirmation. I'm so stupid. You can reframe that immediately. It comes up. Hey, look. It comes up for me. I got all kinds of judgments going on inside me. I recognize them, and I distance myself from them, and I transmutate them by saying something positive about myself. Right? I am so happy and grateful now that I am creative. I am out of the box. I am a thinker. I am awake. That is one of my favorite 
affirmations. When something comes up and I'm judging myself because everybody's going this way and I'm going that way and I'm like, I must be wrong. I say, I'm awake. I am awake. I am awake. Right? It's just an affirmation to replace or a flower to replace the weed. Right? Back to the garden. Brian Tracy says that you have to consciously and deliberately plant flowers in the garden of your consciousness. Otherwise, it will fill up with weeds by default. That means we have to be very active about what I'm saying to you right now, right? Many times we want the thing before doing the thing. Well, I wish, I, I wanna think positive. I'm gonna start trying to think positive. That is like working out. You say you're starting to eat better and you're starting to work out. Well, thinking positive, that's probably where to begin. That's definitely where to begin. That's 100% where to begin. I want anything to happen. The first thing I gotta do is I've gotta train my brain. I've gotta brainwash myself into it being real. Do you see? All this, my man, to simply invite you to be more compassionate with yourself. And when I say compassion, I don't mean boo-hoo empathy compassion. I mean really knowing your power, your place, and your responsibility in this world. You as a folk singer is not about you folk singing. It is about you singing for the world. It is about God singing through you. It is about you being a hollow reed in order to bring forth the beauty that is meant to move through you. It is not just your right. It is not just a nice idea. It is your responsibility to sing that folk song. Done.